Hey guys, so I wanted just to sit down to share this story with you guys, which the story, it like really is close to my heart just because it deals with Wyatt. I am a worried mother. I'm going to have to admit that. I worry about everything and I want to know that Wyatt is getting the best foods, the all the proper nutrition, that he's developing properly, that he's excelling at what he's doing, that he's picking up language and play and music and all those things. Like everybody, every mother, every parent, everybody wants what's best for their loved ones. And then around the time that he started going to daycare, I started noticing that he was getting sick and he was getting set home and he wasn't acting as much of himself. Long story short, we changed uh, daycares, which I think is the best decision that we've made for him. And then he went to another daycare and I started to see like his happy self and him started playing and developing more and um, talking and babbling more. But I still noticed that he had somewhat of a language delay. Like if you guys watch my videos, he does babble and he does talk, but he says the same things, you know, like da da, da da da. Like it sounds all the same and it's not mimicking proper speech and language with the like high tones and low tones and um, different, different vowels and consonants and I feel like Stan and I do talk to him a lot and I know he's getting a lot of exposure at daycare now. Back when he was about 18 months he did have one ear infection and since that time um, we have taken him to a specialist and they discovered that he does have fluid behind his ear from the ear infection that has never really resolved um, and it's kind of like chronic otitis media basically. So what happened was he had to get ear tubes which is for him it's like a little mini surgery uh, just because they can't do it while he's awake they had to put him to sleep so they would put tubes in his ears to like you know help him hear. So, the example that the doctor gave me is that when you have fluid behind your ears, um, imagine this, so put your hands over your ears like this and cover them until there's like no more space like really closely. So I'm speaking in the same tone and same volume as I was before, but what you're hearing me at is totally lower in frequency or totally lower, right? And they call that a 30 decibel like conductive hearing loss and so that is what he was hearing us at um and so i know that that probably delayed his speech a little bit um so <laughs> it was just so sad because i couldn't even be there for the first surgery or for this not the first i hope this is the only surgery he has to go through but i didn't even get to be there for the surgery because i had to Oh my god, I didn't think it was good. So I couldn't be there for the surgery because I had to work and it was the first time I was going to be away from him and starting this new rotation. Like, anyways, I don't know if you're going to see this in this vlog or the next vlog, but but yeah, it's just, it just sucks that like he has to go through this. I think the hardest part was seeing him go through the recovery of anesthesia and he was just like crying the whole time and I was like oh my poor baby and I couldn't be there for him. <sighs> it's not a big deal, it's just, it's not a big deal, it's just ear tubes, you know, and it's gonna, it's gonna help him hear, it's gonna help him develop more and I think we're gonna put him, if he doesn't start talking more or mimicking more within the next few weeks or so, we're probably gonna put him in speech therapy so yeah like I know like I felt like a lot of moms feel this way and are so hard on themselves for missing things or like not holding up to expectations but I want you to know that it's it's okay oh my god I need to get it together seriously Oh, I had to stop filming for a second. But anyways, like, I, I want to tell moms and parents and whoever grandparents out there that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to not know what you're doing. And 
just the love that you have for this child is enough. Like you are trying your best. And so I think we all hold ourselves to a, such a high standard and that we are our own worst critics. And so there's nothing that anyone else says that is worse than probably how you are beating yourself down right now for saying missing something or not bringing in your kid when they're sick or I don't know like whatever the circumstance may be I want to tell you it's okay so I don't know if it's because I'm pregnant and these hormones or I miss Wyatt and haven't seen him for a week but yeah so let's just hang out with Wyatt see how he's doing you can listen to him talk and we'll continue to follow this journey and if he has to go to speech pathology I'll hopefully show you guys that too and some behind the scenes of how we help him develop as his own little person. Okay, it's time for surgery. Why, are you ready? Yeah? Okay. Let's go to the hospital. You ready? Huh? You look ready. Should we do blood pressure? <laughs> you smiling for mom? Huh? Okay. I'm gonna give you a squeezy hug. Ready? So for a lot of you guys watching this who are parents are probably interested in the process for which Wyatt ended up having to get ear tubes. You're probably having questions like, how did you know? What questions do you ask? And so I just wanted to review some of the things that I was worried about with you and maybe some of the things that you can possibly ask your primary care provider. So Wyatt around 16 to 18 months, that's when we start asking like, are you, is he making sounds? Like, is he saying words? How many words is he saying? And for Wyatt, he has always been like right on the edge of meeting the criteria. I believe around 16 to 18 months, he was saying six words, but all those words were very similar in sound. And he said mama and dada, but everything else was pretty much the same sound. As far as understanding language, I think he really excelled. He understood simple directions, even complex directions. And so we weren't worried about that. It's just that he wasn't really picking up new words and new sounds every day. And that's what specifically made me concerned. And then around that time too, he started developing like a runny nose, congestion, and being at a new care, daycare, he was always sick. And at one point he did have an ear infection. And when we went to get it rechecked, there looked like there was still some fluid or scarring behind his ear. And so there are chances where kids just never clear the fluid after having an ear infection and that's why i always advocate for doctors checking ears two weeks after we prescribe any antibiotics or diagnose little ones with ear infections by the time he was about 20 months was when i felt like the language delay was more significant and more noticeable he was only able to say about 17 words at that time and he was not really learning new sounds so if you are ever worried about a language or speech delay i think the ears is one of the first places that you would look you want to make sure that the child is hearing properly and the ear is functioning properly so he gets that he or she gets that stimulation and that can be done as easy as using a tympanogram in the doctor's office and a tympanogram is just used to check for the function of the eardrum and to see if there's persistent fluid behind the ear hey everyone so i just finished my 12 hour shift yes 12 hour shift and um, for this particular rotation, I have to drive home once a week to do continuity clinic, which sucks, but then it also gives me a chance to see Wyatt. So hopefully by the time I get home, um, I'll still be able to, s he'll still be awake. He usually stays up late. It's current, I got off at like 6.30, I think. All right, so just to show you guys, how he's doing and we're home
Dad and Mommy. It's Mommy. <laughs> smells good. No. No. You miss Mommy? No. Why not? I love you. <laughs> Kiss. Mommy. Kiss Mommy. No. Rude. Give mommy a kiss. Hug. You missing me? What? Miss mommy? What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sad. Hurry, hurry. Mama shark do 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 do. Did you say no brush? That's a new word. If that's actually what you said. Careful, honey. Oh my goodness. Uh oh, you got my hand. Got mommy's hand. What other words do you know? Dash. Das. What's das? Do, do bush. Oh yeah, I'm going over there. Whoa. Whoa. Oh yes. Oh yeah, are you going down? You say down? Okay. You got two pairs of slippers. This. Yeah. This. Yeah. So it's currently four o'clock in the morning. I've been up since 3.30 in the morning. I have to drive back to the other hospital. Um, and so yeah, like I just got to spend the night with Wyatt and I miss him so much and I, I don't want to leave and it, it really sucks. But it's already been one week down, so just one more week to go. Um, I definitely hear Wyatt like making more sounds and um, babbling different stuff more. So I'm really optimistic that he'll stop. He'll start like developing words soon. Um, our plan is to put him into speech therapy probably if um, he doesn't show significant change, or maybe even just so he can get a little bit of boost. Um, but yeah, so. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and this update. Thank you all for your support and, you know, just being here. Um, share your experiences with your kiddos down below because I'm pretty sure lots of moms out there are always worried and always comparing themselves with other people. Um, so I think just hearing other people's stories will definitely help ease any sort of like worry or tension that other moms may have so I'm fairly active in the comment section so uh, see you guys there if you haven't already please subscribe uh, join the family and I'll see you guys next time